Plaintiff Colin Malden says she planned her colleague's birthday, but the defendant refused to cover the costs. She's suing for $2,000. Defendant Jasmine Spahn claims the plaintiff ruined her birthday, so she is not paying anything beyond the $500 deposit. Colin, you are suing your friend or your work friend, Jasmine. Um, I'm here because of, well, who I thought was my friend. Um, I threw mm -hmm. a party for her. She's turning 30. Um, I'm a little older than her, so she doesn't have family um, in Cleveland. And so it was in the wintertime, so I figured, why not help my friend with her party? Sure. We both are teachers. Well, I, I actually just retired from teaching to do entrepreneurial entrepreneurial adventures on my own. So okay. one of the things that I do on the side is party planning. So she came to you and said, uh, you know, it's my yeah, 30th Yeah, she was so stressed out. It was like two and a half weeks before her party. Oh, okay. And she had nothing done. And so I just kept hearing my cousin's voice in my head, who's a party planner. And she said, who's a real party planner. And she, she, my cousin, who is a real party planner, has an event business, saw how great I was, and I would help her with things, and she suggested that I do my own. So I, I took me so long, and she just said, just jump into it. So why not just jump into it with someone who I trust and loved? Because yeah. who would do that? My original fee, Your Honor, would be $1,000 to just plan, plus the cost of the party. For her birthday, and because I knew she was stressed, I gave her a discount of $500 on my fee. So, so she, you were only asked for a $500 deposit? For my fee, correct. Right. Plus the cost plus of the cost party. Plus cost of the party, sure. Which I think was extremely <clears throat> fair. So she did give me the $500 at first. So of course, you know, I'm like, okay, she gave me the money up front. She's my friend. I don't have anything to worry about it. I just took her request and I put everything into play, Your Honor. She's not a real party planner. Okay. Well, you hired her. <laughs> right. Yeah. As a friend, Ooh, but girl, I understand. Yeah. Trying it. So, uh, <laughs> did you guys talk about what the budget would be for the party? She was like, I'm getting my STEMI girl. And I was like, okay. okay. So, I was like, I you know mean... everybody's getting some money. So, I was like, okay, I know she's getting it. And she lives down the street. We work together. So, why wouldn't I get my money? Because yeah. you didn't deliver. That's why. And how much are you suing her for? $2,000, which honestly is really more than that. But again, because I'm being such a good person, I'm only doing 2000 because that's a lot of money. I'm trying to move, Your Honor. Okay. I'm a single So the 2000 are for the actual expenses Correct. that you put out. Correct. All right. What do you say? Hello. Hi. I asked my friend, well, my old friend, Colin, um, yeah. to plan my 30th birthday party. I was super... You could call me Cam because okay. we're not um, on the first um, name basically. It's my anymore. time. Thank you. Okay. So I asked her to plan my party. We sat down. We talked about everything I wanted. We talked about balloons, we talked about the caterer, we talked about the venue. We looked on Pinterest, I showed her pictures, I gave her a vision. Then when I walk into my party, it is ridiculous. It's the $500 that I gave her to deposit is enough. Think about it, Jerry. Say if you go into a restaurant, right? Yeah. And you're eating your food and it's not what you order, it's distasteful, it's just disgusting. You call the manager on, you call the manager to you, it's usually on the house, right? So I took this as on the house because she did not deliver. My friends flew from down south because I'm from South Carolina. They flew from Florida all the way up to Cleveland. They was just like, what, what is this? Like, th you're turning 30, this is, you're in your prime. The venue was public, it wasn't a private party. Yeah. So although she had it at a place where other people can come in, it wasn't private, it wasn't personal. So I didn't really feel like it was my 30th birthday party being celebrated. But did you approve the location? She picked the location out, Your Honor. I left everything in her hands. Okay. I was like, um, but you, I sent her saying, messages she's and saying said, you, I trust you, do what you I like I understand that. But when you talked about the location, you were okay with it. I, mean, um, I didn't knew. know it was public, but I was okay with it. I yeah, thought it would still okay be public. with close. the location. Yes. I suggested the venue because I've, we've done parties there before, but what I suggested to her was the private ballroom upstairs, but it was out of her budget. Yeah. The private ballroom was $2,500. The actual venue was $1,200, and the man included like a VIP area. So even though the venue was public, we had a private area specifically for her that. party yeah. that we couldn't stay in. Serve beef and pork at my party. I don't eat beef and pork. Yes, she had other options, but it's my party. Why would you have beef and pork there? Did you discuss with her specifically what the menu was? If you didn't go over exactly the food you wanted, 
which is normally what you would do with a party planner, you would approve what, if you didn't want beef or pork, why didn't you say? Because she was my friend. I guess that's the problem when you do business with friends. She knew I only eat chicken. You're entitled to the menu that you want. Right. But if you don't tell us specifically what you want and what you don't want, using your example, when you go into a restaurant, you order what's on the menu. Right. If you didn't specifically order the food you wanted and the food you didn't want, you can't later on blame her for what she put on the Right. Food. I guess I was just a little upset because I she knows me. We've been friends for a while now, yeah. so I would I expected more from her. It okay. didn't seem like a priority. I felt like I could have planned a better party even being under stress. Everything that she sent me in a text message, I literally copy, copied and pasted what she sent me and sent it to the caterer. If you look, she asked for turkey meatballs, chicken, a fruit cheese platter, egg rolls if possible, and salad. Yeah, I see that in the text. I that copied, wasn't delivered. I copied, everything was there except for the egg rolls because it wasn't a priority and she couldn't get the materials. But everything on that, everything else on that list, she got. And she even added extra of, No, it's you know, making me hungry. That's good. <laughs> everything wasn't on there, but okay. It was good. Let's look at the photos so I get an idea of what it looked like the day of. Well, that's nice. And now we have a video. Let's take a look at the video. So it's just showing how I had people help make personalized things for her. She had pictures on a champagne. I tried to do the best that I could with the time and the money that, you know, I didn't want to go too, too far crazy not having a budget because I know we're still teachers and we all know that we're the most underpaid people in America. <laughs> well, that's true. So, yes. you know, I didn't want to go outrageous, but I did the best that I could in the time that I could and with the money that I knew that I was working with. And, you know, I'm a single mom. I can't keep shoveling money out. The venue itself was $1,200. I used the $500 that she gave me for a deposit. Everything else came out of my pocket. Everything. Okay. So you were at the party as the planner. I didn't even, that was our only pictures that I had from the party because I was so busy going back and forth, working, trying to make sure everybody had any, everything, refilling things, making sure How everybody How many people was okay. were invited? Um, it was probably over 60 people invited, 60 to 100. And how many showed up? Um, I had about 50 RSVPs, but only about 15 or 20 people showed up. And then she even sent me a text message the day of at 6. Now, mind you, the party started at 8. At 625, she was sending me messages saying that people keep canceling on her the day of. So how I control how many people show up, I don't know. Maybe she needs to be nicer to people and do people right, and maybe people will go out of their way to show up. Because maybe when I throw a party, my, everybody comes, you know? But, you know, maybe that's something she needs to work on. That's not my okay. problem. You need to work on party planning because that was ridiculous. Girl, that work was on cheap. being a good person because I can pick cheap. another career. Are you, you guys, I'm sorry, person. that was cheap. Th this may be a question I already know the answer to. Uh, are you guys still friends? No. I love her. And I would love to continue to be her friend because my kids love her. But, you know, I can't do something like this and have people do me like this. You're not a friend. I tried. How do you expect or ask a party planner to pay for the party? You don't go to someone and say, it's my birthday. I want you to give me a gift of a couple of thousand dollars. The but guess what away. she did but for I, my birthday, Okay, I, I, I'm talking now. Okay, okay I'm sorry. So Please let him talk. what she's asking for, and I, you know, that... I can't tell you what's going to happen to your friendship, if it's over already or if it ever gets repaired. You asked her to plan your party. She gave you, because she knows you and you're a friend at work, she gave you a reduced price. That was nice, and people often do that. They do it for their friends. But to ask her to pay for your birthday party, particularly when, and I see the, I see the costs here and the receipts and paid in full and all that to her, I see the evidence she put out a couple of thousand dollars for you. And that, it's your party. You know, unless people came to you and said, we are going to, for your get birthday, we're going to all pay for this party. And that's what I understood, because she made it seem like it was going to be a gift as well. No one would be a party planner if, they had, if the party planner had to pay for the event. So I find for the plaintiff in the sum of $2,000. Mr. Giron, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm going to take a little longer. I'm going to have some meatballs. Save me. <laughs> Dollar store candy, the decorations look cheap. I just expected more, something more extravagant for my 30th birthday party.
I, I don't shop at the dollar store for candy. <laughs> I definitely have more class and polish. I mean, look at me. I, do I look like I shop at the dollar store? No, sir, that's too cheap for me. And she knows that about me. She just likes to do things to get under my skin, hence why I don't even know why I did it anyway. Plaintiff Richard Bird claims his puppy Jack was attacked by the defendant's unruly hound while she sat and did nothing. He's suing for $614 in vet bills. Defendant Mara Burns claims no one knows how the dog fight started and she doesn't see why she should have to pay for his trip to the vet. What's your dog's name? This is Jack. Hey Jack. Jack's not very sociable. He's focused on some treats I got in my pocket. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right, so go ahead, Richard. Uh, well, the day in question, um, I was out with Jack, and I decided to take him to a dog park. We only have a few in the neighborhood, and this one is maybe about 10 blocks from the house. It's a fenced area. It is. Does the dog have to be on a leash? Inside of the fenced yes. area? No. Okay. Um, basically, on the, on the day that in question, I took the dog into the park. I, I barely got into the, the first fence when all the dogs came in. And I was trying to wait for the dog owners to come to get their dogs so none of them escaped out of the in, enclosed area. So I'm inside of the space. Okay, let me, uh, let me see if I'm getting you right. Before you bring your dog into the actual area where the dogs are, the people that own those dogs kind of get a hold of their dog. Yeah, get a hold of their dog um, okay. so that it gives me a chance to come in and, you know, socialize my dog with the other dog. You wouldn't bring your dog in there until all the other dogs are held? That would be, that would be the ideal situation, but on this particular occasion, yeah. sir, um, one, her dog got into that en encagement where I was at. So what do you mean got in? He, oh, you mean he got, got into, into this he got into that area. How did that magic gate open? Okay, I think you opened it before I got there. I was on my way to get my dog. You didn't even give me a chance to get my dog. At that point, um, I had no choice but to lead my dog into the area so that they can either play or whatever they're going to do yeah. once they get in there. I didn't even open it a half an inch before her dog came because he was already behind me jumped on Jack, bit him in the ear, there was blood. There is no proof that there was any bleeding. Um, we couldn't even get him off at first. I had to use, Jack's still on the chain because again, I, I hadn't even yeah. gotten in there. How was that other gate open? I have no idea how he got in there. He was one of the most aggressive dogs. Do as far as like all the dogs that came to see Jack, the owners, they left, they went away, you know? But I was in there for a few minutes before I, I tried to go in there. I don't know how that dog got in there, but he was in there with me and my dog. All of a sudden, the gate's open and, and the two dogs are fighting. So who opened the gate? I would like to know. Because it yeah. didn't open by itself. Yana, there's a, a photograph of her sitting on a bench, nonchalantly on the cell phone with three dogs. That's the dog that bit my dog. I had to have someone hold my dog outside of the fence to make sure you know there was nothing else happening. He was bleeding. I was secured him. I went to talk to her. She didn't. She was in that position when I when I approached her. She was in that position. So I'm and I and I expected an apology. I got no apology. The first thing she said was, "Your dog must not be neutered." Jack deserves justice because he wanted to play like the other dogs. He didn't even get a chance to get into the park. The dog jumped on top of Jack and bit him in his ear. She didn't even come get her dog off of the off of Jack. I hadn't. You can ask if she got her dog off of Jack. When I got there, um, there was no bleeding. There was no bleeding. He gives me, he sends me a picture of, of a, a minor hole. I couldn't even barely see it on, on the exhibit when he sent it to me. And there was no sh screaming. The, the, there was no shrieking. You know, when a dog gets injured, they shriek. My dog, as you see, has a temperament like this. He's a set dog. He's been on sets. He's not a barker. You know, he's worked on several shows, uh, Evil. I'm Plot Against America. How much HBO. does he get paid? I want to talk to my agent. Um, you know what? He gets he gets the uh, the sag rate. I ran to get my dog. You didn't wait. You just charged in there before uh, you know. I knew it. They were, they were fighting. Who knows who started the fight? It was my dog in there first. He was playing peacefully with the other dogs until your dog arrived. So you can't say whose fault it was. I don't. I think my dog was innocent. He was only defending himself. That's why I said maybe your dog is a little aggressive. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, Ayana, and then um, I have proof from the doctor that it was a dog bite, uh, laceration, 
uh, I, caused I by. See, I see that that there was um, a dog. There's a list like, of everything there. Dog, my dog was on medication for two okay. weeks. Total was six hundred and fourteen dollars plus rabies shots. The pictures you sent me, there was not clear that well, there was any, uh, hardly any puncture wounds, m m um, and anything more than if you went to get an ear piercing. And then the bill shows that there was a local anesthesia, $124, surgical repair, $197, very excessive. The emergency fees visit was $120, bucks, which is usually a $60 visit. And, and, and then all these other medication, I thought the bill was pretty excessive, Your Honor. Okay. Did you guys talk to each other afterwards? Just over text. I, I tried, to, to, I see tried if to reach her. And you, okay. you were checking to see if the dog because was okay. I'm a dog I lover. sent her. I, I sent dogs, her the medical you know? bills. I and then she stopped replying to my text messages. Okay. Because so that's why we're here, Judge. I said, because I don't she think stopped I'm replying to my message. You're the one that that barged in there without waiting. When, when for the me. incident happened, and I had to pay no to get my dog fixed. I had to. I, okay. I didn't have the luxury to wait. He had stitches. There's photographs of stitches that he received from the puncture wound. It's not just a scratch. He had a hole in his ear. I can't help but think that there is some assumption of risk on both of your parts. If you're going into an area with a dog where other dogs are around, you don't know all the other dogs. You don't know all the other people who own these dogs. You don't know if any of the particular dogs are having a bad day or have a propensity to get into fights or playfully bite. You're sending your dog into an environment where these things happen. I am sure this is not a unique case. Here's what I'm left with. You're suing for $614. I think it ought to be split. I think there's enough evidence to say both of you took a risk in that situation. Therefore, I fine for the plaintiff for $307. That's an even split. Thank you, Judge. I figure it's his fault. It's his responsibility. It's his risk that he's taking to bring his dog without me restraining my dog, okay? and, and why should I bear any of this? I, I have bills, I have student loan bills, $100,000 that I have to pay off from acupuncture school. I can't afford this. She needs to just sell some of those cats and pay the full bill and so Jack, so I can pay my stuff and get Jack a nice vacation for my birthday. But instead, I'm here fighting for justice for Jack.